you're still fighting with window updates? White House ditched it for Linux back in 2001. The Federal Aviation Administration followed in 2006 and saved $15 million doing it. 20 years later, you're still dealing with forced restarts and privacy nightmares. But here's what's happening right now that's about to change everything. And trust me, after the next few minutes, you might just delete Windows today. Linux just crossed 4% desktop market share in the United States. Some reports say it's already at 6%. Now before you dismiss this, here's why this matters. It took Linux eight painful years to crawl from 1% to 2%, then suddenly just two years to hit 3%, then under 12 months to reach 4%. Now we're blasting past 5%. If you think that it's not a big deal, then you are totally wrong. Remember that this isn't linear growth anymore. This is exponential acceleration. And if you've ever seen what exponential growth looks like in the real world, you know it starts slow and then explodes overnight. Remember when nobody had a smartphone, then suddenly everyone did? That's what this curve looks like. While tech YouTubers debate which OS is better, governments are quietly making billion-dollar decisions to dump Windows. In Germany, October 2025, Schleswig-Holstein completed a massive migration. 30,000 government employees, over 40,000 email accounts, completely off Microsoft Exchange. Ahead of schedule, under budget. But the real story is that they're not stopping at email. Right now, they're replacing every single Windows desktop with Linux machines running KDE Plasma. An entire government infrastructure saying, we're done with you, Microsoft. France. They've been Linux native for over a decade. 37,000 police computers running Linux since 2013. Think about that French cops have been writing speeding tickets on Linux longer than most people have had Instagram accounts. Italy's military joined the party too. Ministry of Defense running 150,000 machines on LibreOffice. Apparently, you don't need Microsoft Office to run a military. These governments are tired of paying licensing fees that could fund schools. They're done with telemetry they can't turn off. They've had enough of updates that ruin systems. For years, gamers had the ultimate excuse. Bro, I can't switch because of my game. Well, that excuse just expired. Linux gaming hit 3.2% on Steam, an all-time record. A big chunk is the Steam Deck, sure, which runs Linux and has been printing money for Valve. But here's the plot twist. Regular desktop Linux gaming is growing independently. Gamers are actually choosing to install Linux on their gaming PCs. Do you know this? Valve's Proton. It's basically a universal translator for games. Windows games just run on Linux now, often with identical or better performance. You might be thinking how it's better, because Linux isn't spending half your RAM on Cortana and telemetry services you never asked for. Real games that actually work. Elden Ring, Cyberpunk 2077, Baldur's Gate 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, now, some competitive games with kernel-level anti-cheat still don't work, but for 90% of gamers, the barrier just vanished. And when Windows 11 keeps crashing mid-game with surprise updates, suddenly Linux looks pretty attractive to someone who just wants to play without their PC having an existential crisis. Let me paint you a picture of what Windows users dealt with recently. Microsoft pushed an update that caused black screens on login, start menus that ghosted users, file explorer having a full meltdown, and settings apps just refusing to exist. Microsoft's response, radio silence until November. Four months of, have you tried turning it off and on again? They broke localhost. For non-tech people, that's like breaking a chef's ability to taste food before serving it. Developers worldwide just stared at their screens like, did, did Windows just break the internet for me? Oh, and task managers started spawning ghost processes like it was haunted. Dark mode turned File Explorer into a rave. Intel Arc GPU users got blue screens like they were going out of style. Microsoft's official solution is that open PowerShell as administrator and manually re-register your system packages with this arcane spell we found in a forgotten tome. You paid for this operating system. Then you became its unpaid IT department. Meanwhile, Linux updates? Mm. They just work. Install, maybe restart. Keep living your life. Sure, occasionally there's a hiccup with specific hardware, but we're talking once a year, not once a month. Here's a fun fact nobody tells you that Linux has been running the world's supercomputers for years because it's stable. All top 500 supercomputers run Linux. Not one runs Windows. There's a reason for that. Let's murder this myth right now. Linux is only for programmers and hackers. That was true in 2005. In 2026, my grandmother could install Ubuntu, modern Linux distros, Linux Mint, Pop! OS, Ubuntu. They're beautiful, polished, and honestly easier than Windows. In my previous video, I show exactly how Linux is easier to Windows. Step-by-step -step screen guided. Go and check it out. The dominoes are falling fast. Connect the dots with me. Government switching because they're tired of paying rent on software they can't control. Gamers switching because Valve proved Linux can game and game well. Windows 10 refugees switching because support ended October 2025 and Windows 11 feels like a downgrade with extra surveillance. It took a decade to go from 1% to 5%. At this acceleration, we'll hit 10% by 2027, maybe sooner.
That's when software companies stop treating Linux as maybe someday and start shipping native versions. That's when hardware makers include Linux drivers by default. So suddenly switching isn't scary anymore. It's freeing. No forced updates, no spying, no surprises. Just your computer doing what you want the way it should. Are you still waiting? Or are you ready to join the people who chose freedom, speed, and sanity? I'll see you in the next video, and by then, tell me in the comments if you've switched to Linux or not.